Hello, everybody. I'm Ricky Smith, and this is Faith on Friday Presents. At Faith on Friday Presents, we're all about highlighting inspiring people, engaging topics, and small businesses. And don't forget, while you're here, to subscribe, like, and share us with your network. So we've all been there. The workplace, the relationship, the grocery store, not even mentioning the DMV. What is it that makes it hard sometimes to respond versus react? Our response is where we consciously think before we speak. The reaction is, well, you kind of get what you get. Today, we're going to talk to somebody about reacting versus responding in all areas and aspects of our life and our business. Y'all, please say hello to Mr. Lou Kelly. Hi, Lou. Hi, Ricky. Thank you for having me on. Thank you so much for being here. I appreciate it. So, Lou, you kind of heard in the intro, reacting versus responding. We're going to get to that. But tell us a little bit about yourself and what you do, Lou, that makes you an expert, if you will, in this area. So I'm a coach. Uh, I went through a leadership training program, and I like the coaching aspects of it so much that after I finished the master's, I went on and went to a coach training program through IPEC, and I'm, I'm now a coach. So uh, I'm with the ICF, the International Coaching Federation, and my niche focus is leadership because I think that's so vitally important in all aspects of business, your personal life family life, um, you know, leadership is where I really want to focus my, my time and my energy. And so at the Honing Stone, my catchphrase is, I help you sharpen your leadership edge. Wow. If y'all didn't catch that, catch that, the name of his business is called The Honing Stone. Yeah, that's a whole thing. And if you know, you already know. So Lou, you said leadership is where you want to be. And because there's leadership in all aspects of what we're doing personal, interpersonal, business, the whole thing. But this topic of responding versus reacting, that is huge because so many of us, we're super good at reacting. It's the responding things where we just, yeah, we lose it. What's going on there? Why are we that way? And how does that help us or hurt us in the areas of our business and relationships? That's a great question, Ricky. And so we all grow up in me, especially having been in the military, somebody would tell you to do something, you got it done and you asked how high on the way up. So you wind up programming your brain and your body to respond instantaneously to certain stimuli. Well, that's great if you're talking to young people and if you need something done right away, but we need critical thinkers. We need critical thinkers in the office. We need critical thinkers in business. And we need critical thinkers in all aspects of life. So that funny comment that you come up with or asking how high on the way up may not be the correct response when you get a certain stimuli. So one of the best things you can do, and uh, General Jim Mattis used to say this to his Marines, the most important six inches on the battlefield are the six inches between your ears. Engage your brain first. And so one of the biggest things that you can do is think about how to respond to different stimuli and get your brain engaged. And uh, that quippy little comment that came to mind, if you can avoid that, you might actually build a friendship as opposed to building a wall. Wow, that that is a whole class right there. And I'm thinking of things like, you know, in your relationships, not just in business, your personal relationships, you know, because some of us <clears throat> are classically trained in sarcasm. And so it's easier to come up with an, a, a funny quip in our mind, but it may not come across really well to someone else, would that be considered reacting or responding? That is reacting. And I'm guilty of that myself. Actually, that's part of what led me to coaching is uh, I used to be really good at that off the cuff response. And I thought I was great. Like I got, I got a little shot in there. Right. Um, but what I did was over time, I kind of offended enough people that somebody spoke to me about it. Like, Hey Lou, uh, which brings me to the next part about uh, what I like in coaching is clients who are coachable, right? Yeah. If you can listen to the feedback that you're getting from your peers, from your mentors, and from the people who work for you, 
Mm. And you can take that on board and make positive changes. You're coachable. So I'm a Mm -hmm. big fan of being coachable. And they're my favorite kind of clients, the coachable ones. I mean, they're kind of the best friends that you have too. somebody that's willing to hear you, to listen to you, and then kind of point out your junk and help you get it together. One of the things you said was about leadership in, in that leadership. When you are the person out front in charge, you need to know better how to respond versus react. Would you agree? I agree 100%. So even if that person was a friend, when you're in that leadership position, that quickie little, that quick little comment Mm -hmm. may not resonate with that person as a boss to subordinate the same way it would between two buddies that are hanging around drinking a beer. And you have to be cognizant of that. What are your words actually doing when they impact the person that they fall on? Mm -hmm. Because you think words have power and you can either hurt or harm somebody with your words. And especially as a leader, your words have a different weight. You're seen completely different. They do. You're supposed to know better. Exactly. And you have to be cognizant of it. And I'm a big fan of understanding people's styles. And so I'm a big fan of like the disc and I'm not going to talk too much about it, but knowing how everybody receives and perceives information is really critical to being able to, to talk to them. You sure. know, for me, mm-hmm. I like stuff. Give me the facts. Tell me what I need to fix. Other people really need to be supported or they want to feel energized when you talk to them and they'll, they'll make the changes, but they want to feel like you're behind them and supporting them, you know, and other people really just want time to think about and analyze the information. So as a leader, you have to watch your words and you have to tailor your message to the person that you're communicating with. That is so true. So Lou at the Honing Stone, who is it that you work with? Who are your clients? So I work with small to medium sized businesses. And I work with either teams or individuals. My favorite are individuals because you can really get that person to focus on their strengths. And I use one of a number of assessment tools. And we'll identify where that person is strong, really strong, and where they have opportunities for development. And we'll get that person to pick out the areas that they want to focus on. And we target that for each session until they get to a point where they're like, okay, I'm on, I'm on cruise control. I know what I'm supposed to do with that. And then they pick another area. And, and by working with them as a coach, mm-hmm. I ask questions. I try to get people to think deep and reflect about what they're doing. There's very little advice that comes from a coach. And I know you know that. Coaches really ask those empowering questions. And what I try to do is find out where you don't want to go. Because there's oh, meat in there, right? I, I you want to get that. to the meat of what somebody's Where avoiding. Where do you not want to go? That right there is huge. Because we've been trained to tell me what you want to do. Tell me where you want to go. Let's talk about your goals. But to ask the question, where do you not want to go? Wow, that throws a whole nother loop into the conversation. It does. And so not everybody will tell you that right away. So as a coach, you're supposed to listen and try to find those areas that somebody might just want to skirt around the edges, right? It's like the way astronomers find black holes in the universe. It's not what's going on inside, but what's going on the edges, right? So if we keep going around a certain topic and avoiding it, I'm going to wait just a little while and I'm going to zero in on it. And then I'm going to ask that question. I'm going to zoom in on that target and I'm going to get you there and, uh, and we'll see what happens then. I love that. So you said you were in the military. What branch were you in? I was a Marine. Hurrah. How did I know that? (laughs) (laughs) Regardless, thank you for your service. Thank you for your service. And the reason I ask that is because coming out of the military, because I was in the military as well, and that's how we moved other through some very different um, other networking opportunities. So coming out of the Marines, and like you said, you were taught to, trained to react, do what I tell you, and get moving. How did you come out and switch that up to where, okay, responding is going to be the better deal? Um, so that's a great question. And I'm going to tell you, it wasn't a switch. It was more like a gradual turn, kind of like watching an oil tanker turn at sea. Um, it took me a while. I needed to understand how um, people who come from different backgrounds, right? When you go to boot camp or officer candidate school or one of those others, that crucible that forms everybody kind of sets you 
um, in line with a common set of values, goals, and objectives. What's different when you have civilians, some of whom come to work so they can afford their lifestyle, or this is a second job to what they really enjoy doing and where their passion is. And so understanding that and kind of learning how to find out what people's passions are, what their mm -hmm. motivations are, because it's not always the same, and then finding a way to align what the vision is with their goals and objectives, that's really critical. And that's where critical thinking comes in. That little quippy thought, it, it doesn't help you get everybody aligned and on target. <laughs> I love that so much. So Lou, if somebody said, you know, I struggle myself with responding versus um, reacting, what are, what are some quick tips, if you will? Like one or two tips that you could tell somebody, hey, try this and let's see, can't we get you moving in the right direction? What would you tell them? So my first one is uh, keep a journal. Oh. When you catch yourself doing something, mm -hmm. write it down. Now, when I first learned about journaling, I thought, well, it's only for teenage girls. It's not. Some of the greatest people in history have kept journals and they give us the memoirs and they give us the historical documents that we use to figure out why and how things went but it's a great opportunity for self-reflection. And when you can reflect on things that you wanna change about yourself, you start building those neural pathways that allow you to change. So a journal is the first one. Mm -hmm. And the other one is asking people for feedback. Hey, wow. I wanna change what I'm doing. I wanna get better at this. And I apologize. So when you do that, you at least let that person know that you're aware, which is important to everybody. Yeah. You build trust and then you ask them to help you. And mm -hmm. forgiveness will often come along with that as well, right? I love that because when you said that, you know, apologize. Because you, when you're asking for feedback from somebody, you may be surprised at what you get. Because a lot of us, you know, we think we're fabulous. Oh, my God, we're amazing. But when you start looking for that honest feedback, you will find out you're not as amazing as you thought. And you can be abrasive, you can be a little barbarous and therefore rub folks the wrong way. And I'm sorry, I apologize, goes a long way to getting that turned around. It does. It most certainly does. And quite honestly, you know, we're all capable of that and we're all guilty of that. If you've been a leader, you've had that day where you've been stressed and somebody asked you that question and you're like, you should know that it doesn't come out as you should know that it's probably got some flowery language wrapped around it <laughs> along with a facial expression that basically just cuts to the soul. Yeah. So learning how to, again, respond rather than react mm -hmm. helps you build that trust, build yeah. that confidence and people want to be on your team. That's true. And like you said, sometimes you're going to have to close your mouth and engage your brain. <laughs> And it can be hard, but the more you practice, like any other discipline, any other skill, the more you practice, the better you get. That is so true. Lou, if somebody wanted to work with you or wanted to continue this conversation with you, what's the best way for them to reach out to you? I would love it if they went to my website and check it out. It's called thehoningstone.com, or they can uh, email me at Lou Kelly mm -hmm. at thehoningstone.com. And my phone number is 540-419-8531. Perfect. Don't worry, you all. If you didn't get that information, all of his contact information is going to be in the description below. And don't forget, while you're here, like, subscribe, and share our content. It's really important. Lou, I know we talked a little bit before, and you said you had two questions you wanted to ask me. So I'm going to let you do that now before we get to our game. So what you got for me, sir? Well, the questions I have are similar to your game. So I'm, I'm curious. Okay. Wine, red or white? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and the next one is pie, apple, or because you live in the South, pecan. Neither. I am a cherry pie fan. Oh, cherry pie it. is my favorite. A good cherry pie. You got to have yummy tart cherries that go with it. And oh my gosh. And I'm, I'm not an a la mode fan. I, I like the pie by itself. I don't want stuff on top of it. Awesome. Well, thank you so much. You're very welcome. And those of you all watching, you're welcome. Now it's my turn, Lou. Are you, this game is super simple. It's called this or that. 
And I'm going to give you the choice of a couple of things. And you just tell me which one you like the best. Are you ready to play, sir? I'm ready. Let's do this. All right. Android or iPhone? Android. Yay. Team Android. Oh, my God. <laughs> Read the book or see the movie? Both. I like to read the book first. <laughs> really? I used to do that. I, I don't. I'm lazy. Now I listen to the book and see the movie. I don't know. All right. Wallflower or Life of the Party? Wallflower? This is interesting. When my wife first met me, I really was a wallflower. But now she says every now and then we go out and lose work in the room and I have to figure out where he is. Yeah. Lou, <laughs> get off the table, hon. Okay. <laughs> Summertime fun or winter wonderland? Summertime fun. All right. Exercise or extra fries? Exercise. Because then you get the extra, extra fries. fries. I see what you did right there, sir. Well done. I like it. All right. Out in nature, or I'd rather be in the house. Out in nature. Mm. Coke or Pepsi? Pepsi. Drive the car or ride? Ride like motorcycle. Okay. Your call. I was thinking a car, ride. but yeah. I'm going to do Ooh, ride. So you ride bikes. I do. I do. Nice. What do you have? So I've got a heritage soft tail and uh, my yeah, wife helped me pick nice. that out. I'm blessed. She she was like, yeah, we need this one. We both got a little bit bigger. So we moved up from a Sportster. <laughs> I like it. It's those extra fries, isn't it? Or whatever. Exactly. Okay. <laughs> I like sports or I don't care. I like sports. Okay. You said that with a little reservation. What's that about? I'm not into the, like the major league baseball. I'm not into NFL. I really like the hometown Fred Nats here in Fredericksburg. Okay. And I like, I like, you know, the small local games, the local teams, the college ball and stuff. I can just relate to it. The settings are more intimate. It's more fun. Okay. I'm not upset about this. Prince or Michael Jackson? I'm going to go with Michael Jackson. Okay. I'm, I don't know why, but I'm not surprised about that. And finally, my friend, what was your first job in high school? My first job in high school was a busboy for a steak and seafood restaurant. Nice. I think a lot of people watching can relate to that. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Ooh, Nothing beats the so smell much. of old food, right? Yeah, mm, especially coming <laughs> home. Oh, what did you work all night? Yeah. <laughs> Lou, thank you so much for joining my friend. It has been so much fun. Ricky, thank you. I really appreciate you having me on. No, Have a I great day. You. We will. And you all watching, thank you so much for being here. That's it for this time, but don't worry. We'll be back next week with more Faith on Friday presents. <laughs>